Hi, my name is Spencer. Uh, I work at VADG, uh, VA Disability Group, and today I'm going to be discussing uh, mental disorders, um, CNP exams. And so first I'm going to talk about how a veteran obtains service connection for their mental disorder. Uh, next I'm going to talk about the regulations that define how mental disorders are evaluated. And lastly, I will be going through a mental disorder DBQ with you. A DBQ is simply a disability benefits questionnaire. It's the form the examiner is going to be filling out um, as they're interviewing or examining you. First element of service connection for mental disorders, there needs to be an in-service event, injury, or illness. Uh, for example, maybe a family member died while you're on active duty that caused you to be depressed, or maybe your military service uh, sent you overseas and that caused marital difficulties and that led to your divorce and subsequent depression. Or maybe you severely injured your back on active duty and then that pain, that chronic pain you deal with every day causes you to have a lower quality of life or you, you know, uh, cause you to fall into a depression. Uh, so any one of these things would be sufficient for the first element uh, what's evidence of an in-service event, injury, or illness uh, for service connecting a mental disorder. The second thing, there needs to be a diagnosis. The second element is the diagnosis. Now, uh, it's not too important to have one of these prior to the exam, just technically that the VA psychologist, the VA CMP examiners can diagnose you with one, although it is beneficial to have that already noted in your records. Um, the third element, there needs to be a favorable medical nexus. This means a psychologist, whether it be a private psychologist or a VA psychologist, needs to state that it's at least as likely as not, as not that your mental health condition um, is a result of your service, whether it be that event or injury in service that caused it. Um, again, the reason why I discuss all this with you today uh, is basically to let you focus on or tell you to focus on at your exam the uh, event or injury that occurred during your service, whether it be hurting your back that caused a lower quality of life um, or whether it be you know, your marital difficulties that started in service and caused you to get divorced or caused your depression. Um, we don't want to focus on events that happened prior to your military service or post-military service. Uh, a veteran's presumed sound when they get into the military, so that's why the prior to um, military service stuff is not that important. And post-service, we want them to focus on your difficulties that stemmed from your military service opposed to trying to give an alternate causation uh, for that mental disorder that you're suffering from today. So the next section, I'm going to define, uh, talk about the regulation for mental disorders. The regulation for mental disorders is 38 CFR section 4.130, um, schedule of rating for mental disorders. So on the screen here, uh, as you can see, um, any number of conditions follow under here. All mental health conditions are rated the same, uh, whether it be major depressive disorder, adjustment disorder, schizoaffective disorder. Um, all these are rated on their same criteria. So it's not going to really matter the diagnosis as much as your symptoms and how severe and frequent they are. As you can see, here's the general rating formula for mental disorders. Uh, mental disorders are evaluated based on the level of occupational and social impairment and the specific uh, severity and frequency of symptoms. And so um, let's just look at the 70% category, for example. This is occupational and social impairment with deficiencies in most areas, such as work, school, family relations, judgment, thinking, or mood. Um, and then the symptoms that usually correspond with this uh, level of occupational and social impairment in the 70% rating are stuff like suicidal ideations, neglect of personal appearance, and impaired impulse control. And so that's what's gonna happen here. Uh, the VA examiner and then the VA adjudicator reviewing the exam is gonna assign you a rating based on the level of occupational and social impairment you suffer from and the specific symptoms you suffer from. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the DBQ. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a walk through the disability benefits questionnaire for you uh, for the mental disorders. This way you know what to expect at your CMP exam. Page one, uh, page one, there's nothing for me to really say here. It's not too important. This is simply where the VA examiner writes down, uh, do you have a diagnosis or not? Uh, do you have a mental health condition? There's nothing I can really advise you on there. All right, page two, the top of page two here, uh, differentiation of symptoms. Um, this is also not that important because even if you have more than one mental health condition or you do have a traumatic brain injury in addition to the mental health condition, uh, generally these symptoms overlap. And because the symptoms overlap, it is impossible for the VA examiner to differentiate what symptoms are attributable to what condition or to the TBI or the mental health condition. So essentially this is going to be irrelevant for rating purposes nine times out of ten. Number three here, occupational, occupational and social impairment. This is arguably the most important part of your exam. Uh, this is where the VA examiner is going to summarize what they think the level of occupational and social impairment is that you suffer from. Uh, once again, you know, the 100% rating usually corresponds to the total occupational and social impairment. 
uh, occupational and social impairment uh, with deficiencies in most areas would be a 70 percent uh, occupational and social impairment with reduced reliability and productivity that would be a 50 percent and so on um, again, the VA examiner summarizes the level of occupational and social impairment you have. However, it's the VA adjudicator who actually assigns the rating. The reason why I state that is technically the VA adjudicator has to go through your entire claims file, has to review this exam, has to review your treatment records before making a decision on the level of occupational and social impairment. Although most VA adjudicators tend to specifically focus on this section of the DBQ and the symptom section that we'll discuss later on. Page three. Uh, top of page three, this is the uh, evidence review. This is simply where the VA examiner is going to check a box and write saying they reviewed your uh, claims file. It's supposed to include your treatment records, your service treatment records, um, all these things. However, the level of in-depth they actually go through those records is questionable, but they will check a box and say your entire claims file is reviewed here. Uh, the next section is history. Uh, so this is going to be your mental health history. This is where the VA examiner is going to briefly discuss, you know, your uh, prior to military, your childhood, for example, your military service, anything that happened to you there, and post-military, you know, did you get divorced, did you have a child, uh, what job you worked, these kind of things. And once again, I'd like you to remember that you're presumed sound getting in the military, so there's no real benefit for talking too much about your childhood. Uh, it's better to almost avoid this or give them very little information about your childhood. Um, and then post-military, once again, they might have a, they might try to attribute your mental health condition to something other than your military service. So what you're really going to want to focus on is specifically any event or injury in service, in your military service, and uh, maybe downplay or maybe not go into detail about your post-military, anything that happened to you, you know, if it was a subsequent divorce or child custody battle, these kind of things. It's better not to focus on these uh, topics at your CNP exam. This is the symptom section I talked about on page four here. This is the second most important part of the DBQ. Uh, just like the regulation stated, certain symptoms correspond to certain levels of occupational and social impairment. So what the examiner checks here, and then in that prior section we talked about of occupational and social impairment will most likely determine your rating. You know, for example, the 70% rating, if they check the suicidal ideation box or the neglect of personal appearance uh, or the, um, uh, impulse control issues, these will usually correspond to occupational and social impairment with deficiencies in most areas and usually the VA adjudicator, once he sees these boxes, he'll assign you a 70% rating. So that's pretty much it. The next section here is just uh, observations um, or other symptoms where the VA examiner can note anything else they would like to put in there. They usually don't put much here. The final page, page five here, this is simply they make a determination if you're capable of managing uh, your financial affairs. Uh, unless you're 100% disabled, unless you have total occupational and social impairment, the general answer is yes, you're capable of manning your financial affairs, so there's nothing to worry about here. That is actually everything we have for the mental disorder CNP exam video for you today. Uh, but if you'd like inf more information, please click on the links below this video. There'll be a link to the DBQ, which you're seeing currently, and there'll be a link to the regulation so you can review anything you want. Um, that's everything I have. Thanks and goodbye.